from our studios in Lincoln. Tell them the news at 10 starts now. It looks beautiful, but if you've been outside, you know it's anything but. As you dig out, the city battles the wind to keep roads clear. Just got to keep hitting, going, hitting it, hitting it. Like I said, it's just my, my fifth time. Despite the work, it's been a deadly day on Interstate 80, leaving many stuck for hours. The winter storm and the mess it's making for drivers is our top story on 1011 News at 10. Good evening. I'm Bridget Fargin. Here in the studio, my co anchor Owen Jensen is live outside in Lincoln. Owen, we start our team coverage with you. Well, hi, Bridget. Hi, everyone. Good evening. And we're at a slippery and icy 48th and Vine and Lincoln. And rough roads are one of the reasons that LPS, Lincoln Public Schools, and other school districts in the area have called off classes for Monday. Also, you should know this the city of Lincoln has imposed an emergency parking ban now in effect until further notice on major arteries, school, and bus routes. Not of those roads. We shot some video from earlier today. Take a look. They are snowy, icy, and treacherous. I know that from firsthand experience. Sliding around myself today on the way into work. Saw some other cars, tires spinning. On the side streets, what a mess. One young woman had a heck of a time getting away from her curb. For several minutes, her tires were spinning until she got some help. Making matters worse, her driver's door was frozen shut, so she had to go through the back door. But eventually, she drove off very slowly, albeit. Bottom line to all this, Bridget and everybody, it's not going to get much better overnight with lows below zero, but the city is out in full force tonight trying to make the roads passable so when folks head to work Monday morning, they'll be safe. And with more on that, here's my colleague, Lauren Scott. Public Works says they sent out over 40 snowmobiles and contractors overnight to clear the roads. But if you look outside your house right now, it may look as if the streets have not been touched and don't expect that to change anytime soon. Crews tell me they are far too busy with the main roads. Hang on, more. AJ Rodriguez has plowed roads here in Lincoln for about 18 years. And he says this amount of snow caught some off guard. Oh, this is a lot. This is a. Uh heavy. You know, we were, I don't think we were expecting this much. With heavy winds and near whiteout conditions, keeping the roads clear is a challenge. The wind just keeps drifting it over. You just got to keep hitting, going, hitting it, hitting it. And I've probably been over the same route. Oh, uh, this is probably my fifth time. Plow set out midnight on Sunday, and AJ says clearing the roads overnight was nearly impossible. Oh, there were a couple times I had my partner and I had to stop. You know, I'm just like, okay, where, where's the road? Most trucks are now focused on putting the salt mixture on the roads. But even with all the hard work city crews are putting in, driving conditions still remain pretty bad. I even spotted not one, but two cars stuck in the snow on my short ride with AJ. If you don't have to go out, don't go out. Public Works says they plan to start plowing residential areas as soon as 8 a.m. Monday morning. For now, reporting in Lincoln, Lauren Scott, 1011 News. Once again, that was Lauren Scott reporting. Thank you, Lauren. And in Lincoln, I should repeat, there is a, a, a parking ban, emergency parking ban, in effect until further notice. And in Grand Island, for you folks out there, the plows plan on hitting the residential areas at 4 in the morning on Monday. Finally, Bridget, whatever happened to those 60 and 70 degree days we had? What seems like so long ago now. Reporting live at a slippery and icy 48th in Vine and Lincoln, Owen Jensen, 1011 News. Well, we'd love to see temps in the 60s again. Thank you, Owen. Come in inside and get warm. After several crashes on I 80, the interstate is open but slow moving, and two people died on the snowy roads. This is video of the interstate accident that killed a 30 year old semi truck driver from Illinois. Several trucks jackknifed between Waverly and Lincoln. In Saunders County, a 62 year old woman is dead after a head on collision that also injured three people. It happened around noon today on Highway 92 between Wahoo and Utan. Now this puts things in perspective on just how bad the interstate was today. Gloria Gress sent us this video. She was at a standstill on I-80 near Milford. She told us it took her eight hours to get from Lincoln to York, a normally 45 to 60 minute drive. Nebraska Department of Roads closed the interstate between Crete and Milford because of a crash. She finally pulled off the road and got a hotel. Now before getting on the roads, many of 
of you also had to clear out from the snow from your driveways and sidewalks. It's the heavy wet kind that can be backbreaking. In some places, the drifts were several feet high. Some shoveled the old fashioned way, others had a little bit of help thanks to a snowblower. We caught up with a few people on how they dug out. Well, it's my only day off of the week, so <laughs> I guess that sums it up. <laughs> I didn't expect this much. Actually, it's welcome. I don't, can't say I like cleaning it up. Now, many of the people 1011 talked to today say the strong winds weren't helping this laborious chore, and all those kids staying home from school tomorrow may find themselves shoveling. And speaking of those kids staying home, nearly 100 schools are closed throughout the state. It's all because of the snow, blowing snow, wind chills, and potentially uncleared streets and sidewalks. We spoke with some students and parents on what their plans are for the day off. I'm happy because I'm. This is my first time going sledding, and if our school wasn't closed, I wouldn't be able to be here right now. Really excited. I don't like school. Lincoln and Grand Island Public Schools, UNL, UNK, Southeast Community College, to name a few, are just among some of the few classes canceled. For a full list of school and business closings, head to the 1011 News mobile app. And with more on what you can expect overnight and on your snow day tomorrow, if you're lucky enough to have one, here's Tony with a first look at your forecast. Tony? All those kids that do have the day off tomorrow, they're going to have a lot of snow to play in anywhere between six to eight inches. And our attentions tonight are going to turn from snow to cold. And we are going to see some dangerously cold temperatures here through the overnight and into early Monday morning. We'll take a look at the snowfall totals from across the area. Ten inches in Pender. They're the big winner so far as what we have seen. 8.7 in Gretna, eight inches in Mullen, eight in Papillion, seven and a half inches officially at the Lincoln Airport, seven inches in Fremont. Here are a couple other totals, seven inches in Seward and Tacoma, 6.8 in Fairbury and Friend, 6.5 at the National Weather Service office in Hastings, and then 6.2 at the National Weather Service in Valley. Now we are seeing that snow tapering off and clear skies are developing. We may see a few flurries here through the overnight hours, but the big thing that we are going to see is dropping temperatures with those clear skies and that fresh snowpack on the ground. Temperatures right now are in the single digits above and below zero. Then you factor in the winds and it feels like it is anywhere between 10 and close to 20 degrees below zero for the wind chills. 19 below right now in Ainsworth. So as we do go through tonight, we will see clear skies and then maybe just a couple of flurries for tomorrow afternoon. Coming up my full forecast, I'll let you know what we can expect for the rest of the work week. All right, thank you, Tony. Well, not only is it a snowy day, but it's Super Bowl Sunday, making it an extra busy day for restaurant delivery orders. While many are staying warm inside, delivery drivers are roughing the roads to do their job. 1011 Taylor Barr spent the day with some Jimmy John's drivers. She's there with the story. Taylor? I'm here at Jimmy John's near 48th and Vine Streets, where employees have been hard at work since about 8 a.m. this morning. As you can see, they're busy making sandwiches back here, but it's delivering them that's been the problem. As soon as Jason Nickel got to work Sunday, he was busy, not only with deliveries, but dealing with the snowy roads. Well, when I first got here at 10:15, they were really bad. Um, actually, one of our delivery drivers was out stuck, um, and so I had to go help. Un get him unstuck um, and then we came back here and we had orders right away. Workers say a delivery trip normally takes about 10 minutes, but on this snowy day, customers had to wait nearly a half hour for their subs. But that didn't stop people from ordering. As soon as we get back from a delivery order, we have three or four waiting for us and we'd grab them and, and take them. We'd come back, there'd be another three or four waiting for us. We have about four or five delivery drivers over lunch hour, too. One of those drivers is Jacob Meckelberg. He started delivering around 8 a.m. This has happened a lot today. <laughs> Jacob managed to get out of this jam, but later put boxes in his back seat for traction. Meckelberg says roads are slick, with side roads almost undrivable. But sunshine or snow, drivers say it's all a part of the job. Workers here say they'll still deliver your sandwich. It just might not be freaky fast. Reporting in Lincoln, Taylor Barth, 1011 News. Hopefully they can all stay safe. Now workers at Jimmy John say they got even more busy once the Super Bowl started tonight. And speaking of the game, if you didn't watch the Super Bowl, we've got your 45-second recap. Sports runs down a crazy finish and what you missed coming up. Plus, firefighters battled more than just flames at a Lincoln club overnight. Why putting out this fire proved to be so challenging, that's later on.
Turned out to be a cold and snowy weekend. I'll let you know what to expect for the upcoming work week in just a bit. But first, we'll take a look at your Lincoln and Grand Island weather almanacs. Well, with the snow from this weekend and the dropping temperatures, road conditions have drastically uh, have worsened over the past 24 and also 36 hours. Still seeing roadways that are partially and completely covered with snow and ice. Here is a look at those road conditions. The pink is indicating that the roads are completely covered with snow and ice. The blue indicating that they are partially covered. A couple of road closures. Highway 41 near Clay Center is considered impassable. Highway 74 near Fairfield is closed in both directions because of drifting. Highway 34 is closed between 98th and 156th Street, which is just to the east of Lincoln due to drifting of snowfall. And also Highway 6 just to the west of Lincoln near Northwest 40th is also closed due to drifting. So a lot of road closures this evening. Otherwise, roads are still in pretty bad condition. Here's a look at I-80 near York, and you can see a little bit of sheen on the roadways there. So not really a great night to be out traveling. 
Uh, probably wait until tomorrow if you can to travel. Even the local roadways still have a lot of snow and ice on them. Here is a look at Vine Street showing that snow still sticking to the roadways. Temperature is very cold right now. We're on 5 degrees, but then when you factor in a north northwest wind at 12 miles per hour, it feels more like 11 degrees below zero, and temperatures are just going to continue to fall from here as we head into the overnight hours. Current temperatures right now in the single digits above and below zero, two degrees above zero in Grand Allen and Hastings, five above in Lincoln, two degrees below zero in Orden, now six degrees below zero in Ainsworth. We've got winds that are now out of the north, northwest between five and 15 miles per hour, so that is putting, putting quite a bite in the air. Wind chills between 10 and 20 degrees below zero. We're gradually seeing clear skies developing as high pressure builds in, and with that fresh snowpack that we have anywhere between six to eight inches of snowfall on the ground with the clear skies and the winds, it is really going to get cold tonight. We may see a few flurries here and there that are kind of below the radar scans, but for the most part, we are going to see clear skies tonight and into tomorrow. Now, SkyCast does show mostly clear skies here heading into tonight. Now, a very weak clipper system is going to kind of roll through here for tomorrow afternoon. We could see a few maybe flurries or even light snow flakes as we head into tomorrow afternoon, but then clear skies develop and a warmer day develops for us as we head into Tuesday. So cold for us tonight and also into tomorrow morning. We do have a wind chill advisory out for much of the state. This will go into effect tonight and last through 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Could see wind chills anywhere between 20 and 30 degrees below zero. That's why a lot of those uh, schools, I'm sure, uh, did close. Tomorrow afternoon, 21 degrees in Lincoln, 20 degrees in New York, 24 degrees in Grand Island. Much warmer where they don't have quite the snowpack in western and southwestern Nebraska. At midnight, zero degrees cold with just maybe a flurry or two otherwise northwest winds at 5 to 15. Tomorrow morning around 10 degrees below zero wind chills at 20 to 25 below. For tomorrow afternoon we'll see those temperatures that are going to be right around 20 degrees for us tomorrow afternoon and it is going to be a chilly day for us tomorrow. Warming up on Tuesday 34 degrees with a chance for some flurries uh, Tuesday night and into Wednesday then we start to warm up but I think it's going to be a slow warm up with as much snowfall as we do have on the ground. As I mentioned we have about six to eight inches, so there is a lot of snow for those kids. If you're going to get outside and play in it tomorrow, just make sure to bundle up. Yeah, I've already seen a few snowmen out there, and it's not just the schools that could, are going to be closed tomorrow. We've already gotten a lot of phone calls and emails on business closings. If you need to report a business closing or event cancellation, you'll see an email address on your screen right now that's closed at 1011now.com. Feel free to email us. We will get that on our web channel, 1011now.com, and of course on our 1011 News mobile app. Well, turning to sports, would cold, snowy weather hurt the recruiting process? The answer is next. Stick around. Now, your award winning local sports coverage. Here's 1011's Adam Kruger. Now, we just had a lot of players play well that last part of the game. And I mean, not even the last part of the game, but the last 30 minutes. And when the game we needed to win going on the road the next two, so I think it was really urgent. On a, we were really. All righty. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. No one, twenty two. Do you have your IFB in? Yep. Yep, I can hear both of you. Hello, can you guys hear me? Oops. I'm on mic three, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, just making sure. I can do it. Thanks, If by grief you mean 97 text messages a day, uh, people... So, I just went back there to talk to my mom about
Now your award-winning local sports coverage. Here's 1011's Adam Kruger. The snow didn't stop three recruits from warm weather states committing to the Nebraska football program today. The Huskers picked up high school players from Mississippi, California, and Florida this afternoon. LaVon Alston is the highest rated of the trio. The wide receiver is a three-star prospect, according to rivals. Alex Davis is a two-star defensive end from West Palm Beach, Florida. And Antonio Reed is a two-star athlete from South Haven, Mississippi. Nebraska now has 19 commits for the class of 2015. Signing day is Wednesday. The 15th-ranked Nebraska women's basketball team hosting Michigan Today at Pinnacle Bank Arena, we pick up the action in the first half. This is Michigan's Madison Rostovsky hitting the three-pointer. Wolverines would lead by 14 early on, but late in the first half, Huskers start the comeback. Emily Katie finds Haley Sample for two, and you still down 31 to 25, heading into the break. Second half, more from Sample this time from Tierra Laudermill. That is good. Nebraska takes its first lead at 37 to 35, but Michigan wouldn't go away that easy. Sierra Thompson lines up the three. That is good. Wolverines back up by six. Huskers, though, would not be denied. Just over six minutes remaining. Rachel Terrio, bucket in the foul. Nebraska back on top by four. A few minutes later, more from the Big Red. Natalie Romeo in transition. Awesome crossover for two. Part of a 20 to 5 NU run. Huskers starting to pull away. Tierra Laudermill then gets the pass from Rachel Terrio. One of three straight three pointers and 11 points in a row for Laudermill. It would not be easy for NU today, but they would pull it off. Huskers come away with the win 75 to 60. Rachel Terrio and Haley Sample both score 14 points to go along with Laudermill's 19. NU improves to 17 and 4 overall, 7 and 3 in the Big Ten. Yeah, we just had a lot of players play well that last part of the game. And I mean, not even the last part of the game, but the last 30 minutes. And when the game we needed to win going on the road the next two, so I think it was really urgent. On our, we were really urgent. It was tough, and Michigan's a really tough team. And it came down to the 50-50 balls, and uh, we just were tough enough to come up with more of them. Nebraska now heads to Rutgers on Thursday. The 10th-ranked Nebraska wrestling team taking on Indiana today at the Devaney Center. We pick it up at 141 pounds. Anthony Abaddon gets the three-point near fall. Abaddon wins by an 18-to-1 technical fall at 149 pounds. This is NU's James Arthur with the reverse. Reverse. Arthur holds on for the decision. Three to nothing. Then... Later on at 157 pounds, fourth ranked James Green for Nebraska gets the takedown in the second period. He would win by 11 to 4 decision. The Huskers cruise to the dual victory today, 33 to 6. Well, former Husker football player could earn a Super Bowl ring tonight. Cornerback Alfonso Dennard is currently on the Patriots roster, but on injured reserve, hampered by a bad hamstring. Tom Brady trying to win his fourth championship with the Pats. New England facing the Seattle Seahawks in Super Bowl 49. We pick it up in the third quarter. Seattle up 17 to 14, and adding to it, Russell Wilson finds Doug Baldwin three-yard touchdown. Seattle up at that point, 24 to 14. Fourth quarter, Pats still down 10. Brady finds. Danny Amendola for the four-yard touchdown. New England within three. Brady passes Joe Montana for most Super Bowl TD passes with 12. Just over two minutes to play. Patriots driving again. Brady finds Julian Edelman. Three-yard touchdown. New England retakes the lead 28-24. New England with the lead, but Seattle still not going away quietly. Wilson finds Jermaine Curse who knocks it in the air and somehow brings it in. Check it out again. Seahawks in business after this amazing catch knocked in the air and Curse somehow comes down with it. Seahawks with the ball on the Patriots four yard line, second and goal, about to punch it in, or so they thought. Malcolm Butler, the rookie, his first career interception picks it off for the Pats. One of the most questionable play calls in Super Bowl history. The Patriots would run out the clock from there. New England wins the Super Bowl 28 to 24. Tom Brady wins the game's most valuable player. His first, first Super Bowl win in 10 years. That's the longest span in NFL history. Well, Patriots fans in Lincoln are no doubt thrilled with tonight's result. 32-year-old Teddy Wetlaufer is one of them. Teddy has been a fan of Boston team since he was a teenager. His basement is painted blue and covered with Patriots memorabilia. It'll be a happy year for Teddy, and now he can maybe put the grief he got about Deflategate behind him. If by grief you mean 97 text messages a day, uh, people putting memes on my Facebook, uh, I, I went and got my oil changed the other day. They changed the oil and said, the truck looks uh, great, but your tires are a little deflated. Um, so it's been harassment, and uh, there's a few lawsuits pending. A <laughs> Good sport there. And you'll want to watch First News Nebraska tomorrow morning in an exclusive interview conducted by our sister station, WOWT in Omaha. We'll hear from Husker head football coach Mike Riley. That's on First News Nebraska tomorrow starting at 5 a.m. Teddy and all Patriot fans are, are just 
jumping for joy tonight that they won. Amazing, amazing ending. How you think the Seahawks are going to punch it in, then how quickly things turn. There was quite a bit of yelling in the newsroom as we all were watching what was happening. I know, it was crazy, wasn't it? I guess it was. All right, <laughs> thank you very much, Adam. Mm -hmm. Well, a Lincoln nightclub is destroyed, and tonight, what the owner was most concerned about after a fire broke out at his business. That's next. last night. It took crews about two hours to get it under control. Now, fire may have started on stage, and an employee says they tried to put it out with a fire extinguisher. We spoke with the club owner who says karma will be rebuilt. The Lincoln Night Club is a total loss. You never prepare yourself for that. Uh, you know, but my biggest concern was everybody got out of the building and everybody was safe. Yeah. An update to the fire at Karma Nightclub. A fire inspector says it may take a couple of weeks to determine the cause due to weather conditions. More than a dozen fire crews answered the call at Karma on South 9th Street at around 7:45 last night. It took crews about two hours to get the flames under control. Now we're told the fire may have started near the stage, and an employee says they tried to put it out with a fire extinguisher. We spoke with the club owner, who says Karma will be rebuilt. You never prepare yourself for that. Uh... You know, but my biggest concern was everybody got out of the building and everybody was safe. Uh, you know, I could tell the staff everything's replaceable. Um, you know, we took over when the queue closed. We'll find a new spot. Then Lincoln Nightclub is a total loss after the fire. And we'll update your forecast next. Straight to graphics. Okay.
Thursday continues for dangerous cold. We do have a wind chill advisory that continues for the rest of the state until 9 a.m. Wind chills are possible between 20 and 30 degrees below zero. Right now we are seeing wind chills between 10 and 20 degrees below zero, and those will uh, continue to fall as we head into the overnight hours. Temperatures in the single digits uh, for the, the current time. All right, thanks, Tony. Thanks yeah. for watching. Have a great night.